On this episode, I want to talk to you about seven essential tools that I believe you need for your security team for your security ministry. Hello, I'm Joe Puckett. Thanks for joining me for this edition. I want to talk to you about each of these security tools that I believe that we need for uh, you know our team and our, and our work that we're doing. Don't forget, part of the reason that we're doing what we're doing is to limit the church's liabilities. And we also want to limit our liabilities as well. So I think it's important for us to have a foundation, whether you've been uh, doing your security functions for a while or you're starting a team or you're new to the team, I think these kind of things are very important for us to have. The first one I want to talk about, radios. If you have to separate from each other, I think that radios are an important thing for us to look at. Some sort of communication. Some people use cell phones, those kind of things, but I think we need radios or some form of communication. If you can walk out in teams and patrol the parking lot, and, and, and look around the church and, and perform your patrol functions, as we've talked about in other episodes. If you can do it in pairs, hey, that's much better. But if you have to be by yourself, then I think that you need some form of communication, some type of radio. Now, what ones would I recommend? You know, there's the Motorola brand, which I used for years in uh, uh, patrols and law enforcement. And, and those are great radios, a very re recognized brand, very uh, reliable tool. They take a beating and uh, uh, they can be dropped and still work kind of thing. But there's other brands out there. If you go to Amazon, you look at the brands that they have, they offer radios on there all the time, a package of three or four radios that are an off brand and for a hundred bucks or a little more than a hundred bucks. So you take a look at those things and you know, I think as an entry level radio, those things are gonna typically work. They're gonna be good for a year or so. They're gonna have some sort of little warranty. Amazon will stand behind them for a little bit and get you going. And you know, I definitely know we're on a budget. I definitely think there are times where we need radios so that we can communicate with each other if somebody's outside and somebody's inside so that we can just stay safely, stay in touch with each other unless you can do things in pairs or unless you're able to keep each other in view. I think next we also have to look at traffic safety vests. If you're going out into the parking lot or if you're going to be working the sidewalks near the street, those traffic safety vests are very important for us to have on for our safety. And you know, there might even be some regulatory requirements for those that I'm thinking. I'm not here to give you legal advice, but I think there might be some OSHA requirements. If you're going to be going out and walking the parking lot, walking in between cars, uh, if you're going to be directing traffic or helping people park, I think those might actually uh, be required. And you can pick those up anywhere for a couple of bucks a piece. You can get yourself a, a bright green or a bright orange traffic safety vest. And I think they're just good to have on hand. You never know when you're going to have a even a special event. Maybe Maybe you know, on your normal meeting times on Saturday or Sunday, you don't normally need to direct traffic or deal with anything, but what if you have a special event like a funeral or something along those lines where all of a sudden it's gonna be more crowded, more people parking, and now you are gonna to need to assist people then. I think we should have those traffic safety vests on hand. We should be using them if we're spending much time out in the parking lot, uh, helping people park or helping people walk in. Just again, it's not just about how you feel about it. It's the regulatory issues and it's about limiting the church's liabilities as well. Don't forget that's an important thing for us to uh, take a look at. So I think the next thing that we need are flashlights. We need to be looking at having a, a flashlight or two on hand. You, you know, typically maybe we're out the door before it gets dark, but you never know why you might even need a flashlight within the building during the daytime. I think flashlights should be a standard issue that you have in your security closet or uh, in your tote, security tote, whatever that looks like, or have that available to you. And again, you never know when you're going to be staying after dark. It gets dark very early during the winter time, so are you going to be there after dark sometime and need a flashlight? And I usually find that even though we regularly dismiss 
our, even our special events before dark or just at dark, there are times where uh, we end up working after dark. And so having a couple flashlights already there, batteries in them ready to go for those types of events means we don't have to think about that every time we might need to use them. They are there on hand. So flashlights, very important. At least have a couple of those on hand for your team to use. Next would be, uh, you know, I would look at traffic control devices. Those are some cones or some barricades. You know, what type of situations do you have if you're along a busy street or, you know, you have a special event? You might need to throw some cones out to block off an entrance or uh, some other access where you don't want people coming in. You know, that maybe you don't want them coming off the busy area because we're uh, full or this area of the parking lot is full, or maybe you're gonna have pedestrians coming through for your regular event or for a special event. For whatever reason, you may need to block off a couple of parking spaces for some reason. I think that you should have a couple of traffic cones, maybe even three or four, depending on your budget, available and on hand so that you can grab those if need be for out in the parking lot situation. There may even be something else, there may be a trip and fall hazard that you note somewhere that could even maybe be indoors and so we want to comb that off throw a cone over it or around it uh, out in the parking lot wherever that is so that you have some sort of warning again helps limit our liabilities the church's liabilities and helps protect people from tripping over something or driving off of the street quickly and into somebody that's walking across a an area or you know coming into an area where it's all full parking uh, whatever those reasons i do believe that you need uh, three or four traffic cones available for your uh, ministry next i want to talk about training materials i think this is important and it may seem kind of odd to go into this mix of a discussion of things that you need tools that you need but i think we need to be especially if you're a leader we need to be seeking out training tools that you can use ahead of time. Whether it's in the middle of a problem issue, you know, you have a disorderly person, or you hear that there might be somebody coming to your church that might be disorderly, or something's happening somewhere else. Uh, I know uh, last year we had, where all of a sudden somebody was driving around the community doing some drive-by shootings, and they did drive by and shoot at some windows out of, or a window out of a church. And so that got everybody kind of fired up. And so when you have those kind of things, knowing and having some training materials on hand for us to talk about, a refresher with our team, or maybe you have a new person on the team. So I think beginning to collect resources, training resources, is an important tool for you. Whether you're a leader or you're a member of the team or you're a ministry leader who oversees security, I believe that we need to try to grab onto those resources, make a list of where we found them on the internet. And it may just be a good video that you saw from somebody somewhere that did, did a good discussion about service interruptions or drive-by shootings or uh, trip and fall situations, you know, whatever those are having a list of those training materials so that again if something's going on you can refresh everybody's memory or after something happens you can refresh with them or use them as a training tool and then you want to keep track of those because when you have a new person come onto the team you want them to have that same training that everybody else had as much as you possibly can you know obviously if it's three or four years down the road we may kind of change things up a bit but we want to have those resources available to us to refresh our people's mind. We should be trying to challenge them, I think, once a month with some little training. You know, watch this video. Send a note out and say, watch this video online. Or bring something, print something out and bring it and have everybody show up 10 minutes early uh, for their normal duties. And let's have a training this week, this month on this. And we're just going to have a quick discussion. Whatever that looks like. I think training materials are an important tool for you. We should be gathering those things, especially if you're a security team leader or you're over that ministry. Gather those tools, have a list, have a file on your computer, whatever that looks like, so that you have things readily available to you and you're not having to make those up on the fly 
when it might be important to refresh people's minds, get them prepared to limit liabilities and get people better prepared. That's kind of what I think. Next, I think, um, you know, I think having a medical bag, a first aid bag or whatever that is, having some of those tools available to your team is a good idea, whether it's just basic band-aids and those kind of things. But I'm really more looking at gloves and other tools, especially if you have some folks that have medic first aid training or maybe they have some EMT training, those kind of things. We want to have a bag that's available to those folks. Maybe you have nurses on your list or doctors on your list that you can go get if there's a medical emergency. Talk to them and have some tools available that they can use. What are those basic tools that they would like to have? And, and talk to each of them, especially if they have a certificate or an expertise level. Uh, you know, get a hold of them and ask them what they would like in a medic first aid bag or a bag that we can grab out of the security closet or out of the security tote and take it to the situation and maybe meet them there as they go to a person that's down. We're going to grab the bag and go meet them so that they have some tools there. If you don't have those experts, then what do you think that you need for a basic bag for your team uh, to be able to perform some of the basic functions that we need to do. Do a little bit of research, maybe talk to some firefighters or EMTs uh, in your local community or that are at your that attend your ministry. Get some basic ideas and have that tool available so that we can begin to start some of the process and evaluations and maybe start some medical assistance, some first aid assistance, if nothing else, uh, should we have an issue that arises. And last, I think surveillance cameras should be a tool that you have. And they make some pretty uh, inexpensive video systems out there now that are batteries. Put a couple batteries in the camera, hang the camera up somewhere, and it goes out onto the internet. Currently at the time of this, I love the Blink system uh, because it's very simple, battery operated. You don't have to run wires. It uploads the video clip. It's motion sensitive. It uploads that clip onto the internet, you can see it from your cell phone. A bigger part of that is, so you've got some security, you know, putting one or two of those up at main entrances, maybe inside the main entrance and outside the main entrance, whatever that looks like. If you have a very small budget, if you can put up some other ones in other areas, that's great too. But what I'm looking at as, as an important tool is trying to get to the point where you have at least a couple of those. And here's the reason. I would like to encourage you to document. You know, this is a way that we can document. If we say we had a guy that came in here, was wearing a gray sweatshirt, and he stole somebody's purse and took off running out the front door, it would be great to try to have some video of him to be able to show to police. Uh, a video of his car or whatever that description of him to try to help reinforce your issue that you had and, and try to reinforce the process, evidence, and try to help catch this person. So I really think today that these are important tools that should be part of this whole security tool bag that we have or, or, or process that we have. We should have these things uh, available in this box, this toolbox that we have, uh, a bag, whatever it is that you have these things available to you in, the, in this security closet, but tools that are available to you. And I think security cameras should be part of that process. As soon as you can get a hold of one or two of those, keep them simple. They're pretty inexpensive if you stick to the simple ones. Pretty easy to install. Free, the ones I'm talking about are free uploads and they'll save so many hundreds of clips. I think even over a thousand clips for you and then delete after that. So they'll save them for days to weeks to months for you. And then you have that stuff available to you should you have a problem that you can try to gather that evidence and turn it over to authorities to help them. And again, remember, that helps prove your situation that you had. It also helps limit our liabilities to have that witness, to have that tool available to us. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, that's it for this edition. You know, I want to encourage you, we have information for you all day, every day at the churchsecurityanswerman.com. If you're at a place where you can leave us a, a, a message, a comment like YouTube or somewhere or Facebook, leave us a comment. 
We'd love to hear from you and hit subscribe and like our page, subscribe to our page so that we can communicate with you as soon as we're uploading this information. And if all else fails, send me a note to CaptainJoePuckett at gmail.com. Thanks again for joining me for this edition. I hope you have a safe and secure week.